This is a mint, and when I break it, This is because of a concept called triboluminescence, which literally means light produced by mechanical stress. I'll get into the why behind all of this later, but first, I wanted to show you some experiments and how you could use some of these at home for yourself. Okay, so the first one and probably most common that you'll ever see of this occurrence is with a Wint O Green Lifesaver Mint, not sponsored. But when you apply that mechanical stress, this energy is very quickly converted into light energy. But what you probably didn't know is that tribal luminescence can be shown with pretty much any item that is molecularly asymmetric or uneven, which means that this charge that is generated when something undergoes this mechanical stress is easily able to be made. This means that many items like sugar, quartz, fluorine, salts, and even polymers can all produce tribal luminescence as long as they are asymmetric. But not all of this light is actually visible light because some items like packing tape or diamonds when they undergo this mechanical stress will actually emit UV light. So let's go try them out. But before we do that, make sure to smash that like button and to subscribe. Okay, so testing out your attention span here, I'm just gonna do a voiceover of the recordings of me trying out these different triboluminescent experiments and trying to get it to work. So what you'll notice is that this first one is me chewing down on the Wint O Green Lifesaver Mint. And what you just saw was some blue and indigo lightning looking colors. And this little gap in time before you'll see the next bit is uh, me unwrapping the next few and putting two in my mouth instead of just one. Because there were a lot of different things that we had to try in order to get some actual results which are that first, the most successful way to do it was using pliers because I just realized that crushing what the winter green mint would be, which is a salt, if you can actually believe it, would achieve the best results. But the next thing that I thought of because trying to record the pliers breaking down on these mints was extremely difficult. So we just decided that doing the best way, the most organic way you'd probably find someone producing this tribal luminescent stuff is by chewing down on it. And that's exactly what I did here where you're seeing the blue indigo lightning once again. Now, I did have to bring up the brightness quite a bit on this recording as you can see as pretty much everything is super, super white in this recording. Everything's really, really kind of bleached out there. And that's the only way you could really see the results. So when doing it, you should probably try to be in a pretty dark room. Now, this is me trying it again with two pieces of quartz, which are another good material, as I mentioned earlier. And those are the two pieces of quartz in my hands. And all you have to do is scratch them together. And you get these orange sparks that start to light up, which are really pretty cool that you can achieve different colors when doing this tribal luminescent experiment, depending on what you might use. I would be really interested to know what the UV light would look like when trying to scratch together two different diamonds or all sorts of different materials because I was only able to get two to work. On a side tangent, you may know that diamonds are not exactly asymmetrical in structure. In fact, they are probably the most symmetrical structure that you can get because it's just a huge tetrahedral lattice made of a bunch of carbon. So how does it work? Diamonds are also very strong electrical insulators, which means that when it goes through this mechanical stress, this electric charge can actually be produced, which then leads to the UV light to actually be admitted in the end place. Which means that diamonds are a very specific and special instance of tribal luminescence that doesn't occur exactly the same way as most others. In fact, there are quite a few different ways that tribal luminescence can occur, but the most common is with the asymmetric structure. Additionally, while doing research for this video, I came across a specific animal called the mantis shrimp. And I noticed that when its fist striked something, I thought it was also creating tribal luminescence but I was wrong. In fact, the thing that it's creating is a property known as 
sonoluminescence, which is a little bit different than triboluminescence, because it actually has nothing to do with the structure of molecules or anything like that. When a manta shrimp punches the water, punches using air quotes, it creates this bubble that collapses so, so quickly, it raises the water in that area to magma temperatures. And when it does that, it creates a small flash of light. But theoretically, if you think about it, you could have an instance with both sono and tribal luminescence. If in theory, a mantis shrimp were to punch something, punch something that could exhibit tribal luminescence. So if you had a mantis shrimp punch a piece of quartz, in theory, you could have both happen at the exact same time, which I think is pretty cool. So to summarize the exact reason why you might see tribal luminescence is when you have these items that are more commonly asymmetric and undergo this mechanical stress of being scratched, broken, or quickly peeled that allow these electrons to get really excited in the item and allow the charge to separate and recombine, which allows this energy that escapes to be turned into energy that we either can or cannot perceive as light, visible light, or UV light. So if you found this to be really interesting or helpful, make sure to hit that like button and to subscribe. Thank you for watching.